Thanks for staying with us here on The Square. Today, as I told you, we will be talking about cannabis cultivation markets here in Africa. By 2023, the value of Africa's legal cannabis markets could be at least $7.1 billion across nine key African countries if they legalize recreational and medical use, according to the African Cannabis Report. The United Nations estimates that 38,000 tons of cannabis are produced illegally on the continent, but only a few African countries are trying to make a difference. Ghana is one of them. The West African country has taken another giant leap to legalize production for industrial and medicinal users. Ghana's parliament passed the Narcotics Control Commission Bill 2023, giving authority to the Ministry of the Interior to issue licenses for the cultivation of cannabis, opening up avenues for its utilization in various beneficial applications. Now, this development comes after the Supreme Court declared a specific provision of the law unconstitutional leading to its elimination and subsequent amendment. By embracing controlled cut cultivation with limited THC content, Ghana aims to explore the industrial potential of cannabis from fiber and seed production to the exploration of its medicinal properties. Now, this legislative milestone is expected to pave the way for a well-regulated cannabis industry in Ghana, offering economic opportunities while prioritizing social well-being and sustainable development. Today on the program, we're having all your questions answered by industry experts. I am Kemeni Amano, and you're welcome to The Square. Joining our gathering today are Ras Mubarak, who is a former member of parliament in Ghana, also played a key role in the previous legislation. We also have Kweku Ando Bafo, who is a public relations and media consultant for Food Sovereignty Ghana. But I'd like to say uh, Kwekuando will be speaking to us in his um, professional capacity outside of his organization today. And then we also have Nana Kweku Ajima, who is CEO of Empire Agric Ghana Limited, also based in Accra. Now, Nana has been a longtime advocate for this to happen, and here we are today with another giant step being taken. But I do want to start with you, Ras. What is the difference between the legislation of 2020 and this ad amendment? What is it changing? Uh, good afternoon to our viewers across Africa. There's absolutely no difference. Um, it was just uh, um, a repetition of the section of the Act, which is Section 43, that was struck out by the Supreme Court. So what the Ministry of Interior which has uh, supervisory jurisdiction over the Narcotics Control Commission. What they did was just to come back to Parliament again with the same section of the law. So nothing has changed. Um, it was uh, the Supreme Court mm. that decided that uh, they would take us back to the black and white era. You know, but kudos to all stakeholders who have played diverse roles in making sure that um, the right thing has been done. Mm. So um, section 43 of the law, you know, prescribes for persons who are interested in cultivating cannabis for industrial and medicinal purpose, you know, to acquire or secure licenses from the uh, Ministry of Interior and uh, to be able to do their thing. And uh, really, this is very crucial in a time like this when the economy of Ghana has gone bust, you know, when majority of the young persons in our country who either have completed school or who are out of school are currently struggling to secure jobs, you know, and you have a unique opportunity right. that would have made it easier uh, for companies that would be set up, you know, to employ some of these uh, young people up and down the country. And we're talking about a variety of jobs. It's not just um, experts who would be, um, you know, turning the products or produce from industrial cannabis into um, finished products, but we're talking about security. 
Well, I think we lost that uh, connection to uh, Ras there. I'll move on to na 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 na. You know, what does this uh, latest legislation mean for players in the um, uh, cannabis market? Well, first of all, good afternoon to you and good afternoon to all my brothers and sisters on the continent. And thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, what it means uh, in Ghana is that um, potentially we can set off the industry, a brand new industry, can establish a brand new industry in industrial health. Uh, and what that means is that we can create tens of thousands of direct jobs and also tens of thousands of indirect jobs as well. As uh, Ras Mubarak was saying, uh, Ghana is in a bit of a predicament and um, government has made it clear to all those who are yet to even be graduated that when they graduate there are no jobs for them and they should go and find something to do. This is literally what they've been told to do. Uh, and even the even Joining the IMF now, the IMF also dictates that government can only employ 5% of the available workforce. So we're in a bit of a conundrum. Um, in terms of internal revenue, this even gives the, provides the opportunity for government to now generate some internal revenue from the taxes of our cultivation. And as we're going to start off initially cultivating and exporting, then that will also add to the, the, the whole thing because we'll be, we'll be uh, generating income in, in Forex. Mm -hmm. And this will be also be good for the country, will also be good um, for, for the government. So there are so many benefits right. from what has happened. It's unbelievable. And the, the value chain is, is very large. It's very, very large. I, I, I so do want us to talk about that value chain. And Kwekuando, uh, I hope that you can uh, begin that conversation for us. Um, you know, the, the Ghana's legislation is looking at, uh, you know, the purposes for uh, industry and uh, medical reasons. Uh, what can cannabis do for in, the, in, in terms of industrial use and medical purposes? Quickly, you're viewers. muted. Um, well, factually, first of all, um, uh, industrial hemp is the most um, industrious plant on the planet. When we say that, we mean that um, this plant has the most derivatives that you can get from it. So industrial hemp um, can give you oils, can give you paint, it can give you pesticide, it can give you uh, food, uh, it can give you fiber to build with, it can give you fiber to make clothes with. Mm -hmm. It can make you um, pulp for paper. It's the most industrious plant that we have access to um, on this planet. So that alone tells us that if we can now industrially grow it legally, um, you can imagine all the potential uses that this plant now brings um, to contribute to the economy of Ghana. Mm, I see. I want to come back to you, uh, Nana. Uh, we've talked about uh, the medicinal use. The legislation is very specific on the THC value of hemp. So first, maybe you should share with us what are the kinds of um, uh, types of cannabis that can be grown in Ghana and why the THC level on dry weight is important uh, to, to the industry. Yes, thank you very much once again. Well. Uh, what has been approved is uh, industrial cannabis with a THC content of 0.3%. The THC stands for tetrahydrocannabidiol, and this is the compound within the recreational marijuana that gets you that so-called high. You know everybody talks about you smoke marijuana and you get high. It, it is that specific compound that uh, reacts with the brain and causes this mind-altering feature, so they say. Um, now, the THC in recreational cannabis is, there's a huge difference, because you can go up to 25% even, and more, in terms of the THC content. Now, 
leveling off the THC content at 0.3, it's a global affair. Um, there are people who think that perhaps you could take, uh, people take advantage of this, but in fact you can't. In, in our part of the world, no one will uh, dream of smoking industrial hemp with a THC level of 0 0.3 because nothing will happen. Um, so in terms of medicinal, it's very important. Uh, the 0 0.3 is still very good in mm. terms of its application as medicine because um, CBD that is produced from it can deal with uh, epilepsy, for example. It can reduce the seizures and actually bring the seizures to an end. It's good for autistic children as well. It's good for dealing with insomnia, hypertension, high blood pressure, PSTD, uh, AHD, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it's quite good, even with that level of THC, uh, that it's still very valuable. It's still very potent as a medication, but not as, but, but not as um, something that people would use recreationally. Right. So it's a huge difference. Mm. And uh, basically, both plants are relatives. But the, the industrial cannabis grows to about 16 feet tall, and it bears seeds. It has buds, but those buds have seeds. Whereas the recreational cannabis, which is what you are showing now on your screens, um, that grows to about six to seven feet tall, and that bears buds, and it's those buds that are picked and processed and then consumed uh, via smoking mm. or you can cook with it or making of toffees, et cetera, et cetera. Right. But, but that is not the focus. And Indeed. Currently, in Ghana, currently in Ghana, we don't cultivate industrial hemp, so we don't have any seeds or anything uh, for industrial hemp. So we will have to initially import the seeds. There will be certified seeds. Let's say you can import them from France, because France have never stopped cultivating industrial hemp. They will come with a certificate indicating that they are 0 0.3 THC or less. Mm. Uh, and once they arrive, you will, if we will have to go to the Narcotics Control Commission to give them a sample of those seeds so that those seeds can be tested and, and the whole thing verified um, to, to indicate that what it says on the certificate is, is what has actually arrived. Very well. And that's how we start the whole process on Indeed. I do want us to talk about the business of cultivation. Uh, we've, we've, you know, we've all talked about the benefits it could give uh, the country at the macroeconomic level. And so, Ras, um, I, I want you to assess whether or not, um, you know, the government has plugged itself in, in this in such a way that it will reap the benefits, uh, you know, benefits that potentially could reach the ordinary Ghanaian as well. Well, to be perfectly honest with you, um, now, now, now I'll, come, I'll come to you for that. But uh, that that question was directed at Russ. I'll come to you for your thoughts on okay. that. Russ, can you hear us? Timothy. Uh, yes. In terms of uh, government positioning itself, um, I don't think this is a, a venture where government would have to you know, uh, take over, you know, the cultivation of cannabis. You know, this was done ostensibly, you know, to empower people up and down the country. But with respect to benefits that would accrue to government, you could be talking about um, corporation taxes from uh, companies that would set up to use the uh, byproduct of industrial cannabis for things like your toothpaste, you know, your chocolate, your hair products, and the rest of it. You know, um, aside corporation taxes, obviously, um, when these companies are set up properly, uh, they would be paying um, income taxes of their staff as well. And uh, beyond income taxes, you could even be talking about uh, value-added tax on the finished products, you know, um, from industrial and medicinal cannabis. 
So that is the that is the angle from which government could look at reaping the benefits of um, this green gold. Right. You know, uh, to be able to generate a lot of revenue to build more schools, well, more roads. You, you more know, I, I would have thought that there could be some uh, much more direct revenue coming into you know government coffers through PPPs, but. Um, Nana, I'd like to hear your thoughts on the same question. Yeah, um, look, it's quite simple. Um, what we need from government is legalization, regulation, and then taxation. And that's it. And the reason why I say this is because, look, we're at the IMF at the moment, and we're not at the IMF because um, government has, been, has managed our economy in the best way possible. We are at the IMF's door and beyond because of the mismanagement of our economy. And look, we have gold and we boast about the fact that we're the second largest producer of gold in the world. But there is no benefit to the ordinary Ghanaian, in fact to anyone. We have, we have nothing inside it. There's the oil and the gas, which almost like Nigeria has become a curse. Uh, we have the bauxite, which we also have no control in. We've discovered lithium in commercial quantities. I know that's going to be farmed out as well. We have iron ore in commercial uh, quantities. Uh, that's also going to be farmed out as well. We, we won't have anything in all those resources. Furthermore, government has in its control 175 state-owned enterprises and when you look at what they add collectively to our GDP it's negligible it's 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 a paltry five percent so government have already demonstrated that they're not capable of managing the nation's resources and so there is no reason why government needs to be plugged in apart from legalization regulation and taxation. This is something that should be managed by the private sector because I believe once it's managed by the private sector that we will be able to ensure, obviously along with the Narcotics Control Commission, we will be able to ensure that government generates the taxes mm. that it should get. I mean, after all, it's government who's going to set the standard for the taxes. They're the ones who are going to say what it should be. But they should set that, and the private sector should pay. And it should just be as simple as that. Very well. Uh, Kwekwando, I'd, I'd want to take your, your thoughts on the same question. Should government take its hands off uh, directly involving itself in you know, the cultivation process, even through PPPs? Yes, I agree too. I think um, the, the government should uh, play the regulator and ensure that the, the level playing field and environment and ecosystem is, is, is available um, for private actors to come in and take advantage of, uh, of the law, take advantage of um, tax regimes and to put incentives um, within the value chain which will inure to the benefit of local producers, local farmers, um, so that, or, or, like Nana is saying, not all the profit and, 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 and the green uh, gold goes outside, but that right. there's a, a, a retention and a, and a benefit here for local players. So I, I do agree. So um, on, on, the, on the subject the of... Get involved in. right. and if you look at other countries, um, uh, the government has just provided the regulation and they've benefited from the, the, the economy that it has created and, and, and taxes. I think in the state of Colorado, in the first month after it was um, legalized, they made, the state made over $200 million, um, which is quite... Um, attractive for any developing economy um, to be able to have a new dimension of revenue uh, generation. On the subject of a level play field for uh, you know anyone who wants to uh, privately cultivate uh, cannabis in Ghana, how would you assess the current regime? Is it ensuring inclusivity, particularly for small farmers? Is it ensuring that corporate bodies, as we expect in some uh, really high uh, corporate taxes. Is it ensuring that corporate bodies do not hijack the cannabis market? Kukwanda, that's, that's, that's for you, Kwekwando. Okay, well, I mean, we wait to look at the details of the legislative instrument, the LI, 
which will speak to a lot of these uh, details. Um, we know that um, it would be in the interest of government to ensure that uh, a lot of the benefits uh, uh, are, you know, consumed locally. A lot of the benefits uh, are near to the Ghanaian who's on the ground farming, who's producing, and uh, to create the kind of environment where eventually there'll be high technology transfer, then there'll be the production of all these, um, you know, cannabis-derived uh, products like hair oils and shampoos and deodorants and perfumes and, uh, you know, skin creams, you know, you name it. So the government needs to provide that uh, enabling atmosphere and then make it attractive for players to go in and, uh, you know, do business. Very well. Uh, now, now, I'll take your thoughts on that when we come back from the break. You're watching Ville Square Africa. We'll be right back. Our focus on the square today is on the cannabis market of Ghana following uh, fresh new legislation that uh, the parliament of that country has passed. Still with me at Nana Kweku Ajima, who is CEO of Hempire, Agric Ghana Limited. We also have Kweku Ando Bafo, who is a public relations and media consultant for Food Sovereignty Ghana. And then we have Ras Mubarak, who is the former member of parliament in uh, Ghana. Gentlemen, thank you so much for your patience. And I did say I was going to come back to you on the subject of inclusivity, on the subject of opportunities for smallholder farmers, and on, on the subject of domestic use of these uh, industrial and medical, uh, you know, can cannabis. What are the opportunities there? What would it take to ensure that there is inclusivity as things are right now? Well, as for us uh, in the private sector, um, I think it's tomorrow afternoon I'm meeting with the chairperson of um, Ghana Smallholder Farmers. So we're going to iron something out uh, with them so that they will be included and they deserve to be included. So that is something that is dear to our heart that we must deal with. We don't want to leave anyone out. So it's a part of our program uh, of Empire Agri Ghana to ensure that smallholder farmers are a part of this process. So we're going to have meetings uh, with their leadership tomorrow, and, and we, will, we will draw something out. We will work something out mm -hmm. to ensure that the program that we are putting forward uh, is inclusive and includes them. Mm, very well. Uh, Ras, so, you know, what, what would it take? Are we looking at more legislation here? Uh, to make sure that smallholder farmers are not uh, left behind, because based on what Nana is saying, it is out of um, the goodwill of his association and maybe his company and other players in, in the industry uh, that are going out to reach out to uh, smallholder farmers uh, to, to create the awareness on this and give them a space in, on, on the market. Should we be looking forward to more legislation, or is the current legislation already dealing with this? Um, there's going to be the legislative instrument um, that would um, add a bit more flesh, you know, uh, to the meat in terms of um, what needs to be done with respect to the um, licensing regime. All of that would be encapsulated in the um, legislative um, um, instruments. The law as it stands now um, is a good one. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing a situation where smallholder farmers are not priced out of the market. So critical in the legislative instrument would be um, a provision that gives room, you know, for everybody. So that um, the price for acquiring a license is not pegged so high that um, the ordinary Ghanaian farmer would not be able to access it. If mm. if that were the case, uh, that would go a long way to you know helping all of those um, small holder farmers up and down the country. But uh, we would also use this opportunity to encourage um, what you call it um, cooperatives, associations, you know, uh, to take advantage of this opportunity they could find themselves in anywhere within the entire chain of um, the, the process from cultivation to industrialization. And there's a lot of um, food literally for everyone who's interested in, in having um, a, a, a bite at the cherry. 
you know. So it looks good, but this is also not landmark for Ghana, but this is something that those of us who are pan-Africanists mm. are looking forward to seeing all over, all over the continent of Africa where countries are harnessing our natural resources, you know, to the best advantage of our people instead of uh, depending largely on these uh, Britain Wood institutions, you know, um, to help us out of our economic situations. There's a lot that could be done within Africa and the time has come for us to look within, you know, currently as it stands now, uh, we've been nudged out of the oil industry, out of the mineral extraction, extractive industry. Right. And even if you look at um, agro products, you know, um, you know, many countries within Africa still have, you know, uh, their agri sector not fully controlled and owned by themselves. Recently, when, you know, we had the Russia-Ukraine war, you saw how many countries in Africa took a hit as a result of not having enough quit, you know, right. within their respective countries. So these are things that we ought to do, you know, to empower our people and to get our people out of poverty. Mm. Uh, Kwekwando, let's talk a bit more about domestic use. Uh, the stigma uh, surrounding the, the plant is is one that we cannot exhaust uh, if we choose to speak about that across the continent. Um, and, and so there will be a bit of work when it comes to creating awareness on, on the importance of uh, the, the version of this plant that is, is being cultivated in the country. In what ways can we begin to educate the masses on this? Okay, thank you very much. Um, yes, education is very important because we have to dispel myths myths that have um, become very ingrained in our, our modern culture. So the minute the mention of marijuana, um, people link it to madness and all sorts of things. But um, we must have a lot of education. This is industrial hemp. This is not something that is going to give you any sort of pleasure if you consume it um, recreationally. This is industrial hemp. This is for use for you know, pulp, for paper, for, for building, for oils. Uh, cosmetics and, and all kinds of manufacturing purposes. So we all have a role to educate our communities. Um, chiefs um, and queen mothers have a role to educate um, their communities now. It's not about um, this illegal, um, what we know as marijuana, this is uh, industrial hemp. And so mm -hmm. we have to sensitize communities to accept it as something which is legal, something which can provide income, something which will be well regulated by the the, the powers that be, right, and something that if we treat right will bring in, in you know industry and development to many communities. Let's uh, remember that uh, the bulk of Africa is an agrarian society. That mm. means that a lot of our people are still involved in in, in agriculture, and mm. if we can ensure that um, the education comes to these communities and they realize that this is uh, just any other input plant, but not just any other, has so many uh, uses then communities will take it up. Uh, chiefs who are giving land will realize that this is um, something beneficial for the communities. And um, you know, parents will not stigmatize their children if they want to go into the, the, the growing of cannabis. This is now when we can bring uh, more dignity to agriculture. This is when agriculture can earn money uh, for young people and to take away the, the, the devastation of unemployment, which is ravaging the youth. Indeed. So we need lots of education and lots of open-mindedness. Uh, let's start dealing with the truth. Let's start dealing with facts. And we must dispel the myths that will allow us to make the best use of this uh, very important legislation. Absolutely. Uh, Nana, I do want us to talk about value addition. What we've seen with the other countries who have similar laws on the continent is, you know, it is export-driven. We haven't seen domestic value addition. How important will domestic value addition be to the uh, growth of the uh, of the cultivation markets in Ghana, and in what ways can that be made possible? We, I think, well, it's a very important question. Um, I think we have to understand that where we're coming from, it's ground zero. We don't have an enabling environment here in Ghana, so we can't approach the banks for loans because the interest rate is over 40%. Uh, so that's a no-no. So basically, 
the, 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 the industry has to start off as an export-led industry because that's the way we're going to earn foreign exchange. That's the way we're going to build up significant amounts of cash so that we can start um, establishing facilities and adding value uh, to the product. I've already seen this as a key issue because when I look at the cocoa farmers, they're suffering. Uh, once again, this is something that we will boast that we're ranked very high up in the world, um, but the cocoa farmers get paid a pittance. Um, their lives have not changed. Many have uh, not even tasted chocolate before. And in terms of adding value in that market, it's at an all-time low. We must, we must ensure that we generate the revenue required for us to build the facilities that are necessary for us to add value. There is no other way because we can't access finance in Ghana. The only other way to access finance is outside of the continent where interest rates are between 3 and 5%. But it's also quite difficult. They make you jump over a lot of hoops and go through a lot of hurdles. So, you know, um, it's a bit difficult. So it's got to be export driven in the beginning for the first couple of years. But then after that, we should settle down. We should have the finances we need to establish uh, this industry properly. And then we can start looking at producing hempcrete hemp wood, hemp charcoal, mm. hemp biofuel, hemp textiles, Indeed. everything plastic, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Nana, could we go as far as say that perhaps even the interest or investor interest at Hempire at the moment is mostly uh, from the diaspora? Yes, that's absolutely true. Um, those who are willing to invest at the moment, they're they're diasporans. They are diasporans, they and um, they've been coming into Ghana uh, throughout the past four years as we've been back and forth with the legislation um, to to position themselves. And I think that's good. I mean, many want to come home anyway. But wh wh is, why do, why do you think you're not getting the same investor interest? Because people have money; they are looking for safer and uh, more uh, profitable places to put their, their monies, I even locally. Why do you think that the in interest isn't in hemp? Well, it's new. It's new. Uh, and, and as Kweku said earlier, when we say hemp, they think we're talking about smoking. So this is something that's ingrained culturally in our society. And even the pictures, not only our society, because the vast majority of the pixels that you're showing are, are not of industrial hemp, they're of recreational cannabis, and that's all about smoking. So you see, um, we have a challenge, because in terms of educating, we have to get such pictures off our screens and show the proper pictures, and then show the byproducts from those pictures, which are the hempcrete, which will allow you to build low-cost housing, which is hemp wood which will allow, uh, allow us to, to stop this issue of deforestation. Hemp charcoal does the same too. You know, it's, it's, it's you know, about deforestation. But not only that, when you cultivate industrial hemp, it's environmentally friendly, so it sequestrates the carbon dioxide mm. as well. Um, and it's like 20-odd like tons or so to a hectare, to each hectare if I'm not mistaken. I see. So I there's tell also good there. Right. I tell you what, that's um, a lesson learned. We would, would figure out which ones are the best best pictures that tell the story and put them on television. Uh, but, you, you know, you mentioned something I wanted to talk about uh, anyway with regards to, you know, the environmental impact. But maybe we could discuss first how, uh, you know, marijuana could coexist with uh, other agri- uh, practices that, that are already, uh, uh, you know, existent in the country, especially when we, especially when we are reaching out to um, smallholder farmers. Uh, Kwekwando, maybe you could come in on that for us. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I mean, this this affords uh, smallholder farmers the ability to make more income. You know, to diversify the kind of crops they can grow. 
first of all, industrial hemp grows in almost all kinds of soils, and it does very well um, with, with you know, minimal attention. So it's, it's something that smallholder farmers can earn an extra income. We're not saying that smallholder farmers should stop growing the food that they, 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 they plant, um, you know, to eat for their families and to make an income when they take to the market. But this will be able to diversify their income stream. Um, if you talk to most farmers, they can't afford to buy a new cutlass every season. Uh, there are very few farmers who have any drying machines, a few farmers who have their tractors. This kind of a cash crop will allow them to diversify the ability to bring in um, income into the communities and then to use that income to send their children to school, to put up clinics and um, to, to grow more food. Um, we need more food in the cities here. So if we empower them in the rural area um, to have more capital to grow food, uh, we will have cheaper food in the cities here. So it's a win-win situation. Indeed. Uh, Russ, I come to you now. There are the naysayers who, you know, despite the education that we have received here, will refuse to understand the fact that hemp is important uh, for economic growth and it's much more than just smoking or steeping for recreational pur purposes. I do want to ask you, though, while this is going on, again, miseducation could occur in the sense that already, in fact, when you read about Ghana, uh, Ghana is described as tolerable when it comes to uh, the use of rec recreational marijuana. Now, my, my uh, speculation now is with the ongoing legisl legislation allowing um, the growth of um, industrial uh, hemp, that could also be alongside the black uh, market of, of the, you know, of, of the recreational marijuana. And so where does government strike the balance in this economic um, need and a social well-being, uh, you know, aspect of, of, of the country? Well, I mean, it, the government needs to play the role that it plays. No, that's for us. Other... Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, let me, let, let, let me pick up on, uh, on a point made a bit earlier by uh, Nanakwe Pajiman. We agree pretty much on everything, except that um, I'm of the view that um, we need to look at having the produce made from industrial cannabis actually um, turned into finished product. You know, we need to begin to have a dialogue on adding value. And I think it will not do us any good if we're going to start off by exporting whatever we have to some countries in Europe and North America for them to um, begin to, you know, add value to those products. So that is the first point. Secondly, well, he, he says it's a starting point. I don't, I don't, I don't think it would, I, 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 I don't think it would do us any good because um, I know for a fact that um, there are people within Ghana, Ghanaians, you know, who are interested in, in putting quite a lot of money once the building blocks have been put in place. Uh, we haven't seen much impetus, you know, into setting up factories and having these things done because the necessary legislative processes have not been completed, you know. So let's not jump the gun and throw our arms in the air and feel that, you know, as Africans, as Ghanaians, you know, we can't get it started. I believe we can, and I've interacted with a lot of people who are willing and able to put in quite some substantial amount of money, mm. you know, to get it off the ground. Now, having said that, I don't know where you read that um, Ghana has a tolerable, you know, attitude to um, uh, recreational cannabis. Uh, absolutely. It says it's illegal. However, its, it's use is tolerable. I was surprised to see that also. Quite the contrary, if you look at the laws and how the courts have dealt with people who have been caught, you know, sometimes with just a, a stick of cannabis, you know, and they get to be given six, seven, eight years in prison, imprisonment with hard labor. It's, 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 it's intolerable, you know, that we would feed our own kith and kin, we would treat our own children, you know, and young people who could be productive players in in building Ghana like this, you know? So Ghana has a very intolerable attitude towards recreational uh, uh, cannabis. And you don't need to go far 
beyond or from the prisons and the stream of sentences that you read in the news every now and then right. of people who are caught in possession of cannabis. Now, obviously, this is new. This is landmark. It's never been, been done in Ghana before. So you will definitely have people who would express opposition to this. You know, every now and then, people are afraid of something they are unaware of, something they have limited knowledge about. You know, and that is very telling in the kinds of things they say during commentaries on radio and TV right. in Ghana. What Ghana has decriminalized is industrial and medicinal cannabis. Right, right. So if you could quickly tell us, quickly, uh, where, where yeah. would we strike the balance, you know, between those naysayers who, who may fear that recreational marijuana would also grow, uh, will also be grown alongside industri industrial hemp. So where do we strike there, the there, balance there, between social well-being and economic uh, growth? There, there's got to be a lot of uh, public, uh, public education. The uh, Ministry of Interior, through the Narcotics Control Commission, would have to embark on a, on a public campaign of educating the public, you know, through music, through drama, through play, through art, you know, through pictures. I mean, pick a train in New York, in the trains, you see all sort of things that I get towards, you know, educating the public about cannabis. Well, Pick a train or tram in the Netherlands, you will see the same thing. This is the kind of campaign that I expect Ghana to embark on. Very well. You I'm know? afraid we have to go Ghana... now. We're out of mm. time. But gentlemen, I am grateful for all the information you've shared with us here. Thank you so much, Nana. Thank you, uh, Ras. And thank you, Kwekuando. Thank you very much. Thank and you very thank much. you too for watching. Let the conversation be, uh, continue wherever you're watching us from, wherever on the continents that you are. We hope that you reach out to your legislators uh, so that Africa can uh, take its place in the weed market. Well, uh, Indian hemp market. Thank you so much. I'll see you same time tomorrow. Bye-bye.